Good people, today we are gonna be pushing the limits of what's possible with an ITX system by building an extreme ITX PC into a super compact seven liter. You heard that right, seven liter case. Honestly, I've never been this excited about a build before and I'm sure you guys are gonna love it. Why you may ask? Well, that's because we're jamming in a 16 core processor and an RTX 3090 into a case that's sitting right next to my shoulder. As you can tell, it's the same size as a GPU box. Isn't that crazy? I'm sure by now everybody knows what NVIDIA's new RTX 3000 series GPUs can bring to the table. The performance improvement over the previous generation is just incredible. But to get that kind of performance in an enclosure that's about the same size as one of those consoles that everyone's been talking about lately, it's definitely gonna be interesting. So I'm really excited about this build. I hope you guys are as well. So let me walk you through the rest of the components right after we pay some bills. Four hundred, yeah. Ah, the rival three wireless, nice. You get up to four hundred hours of playtime with two AAA batteries at one thousand hertz. That's plenty of time to own in games with a good shape, user-defined weight, and a mouse that is also Bluetooth ready. The Steel Series Rival Three Wireless. Check it out below. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the case because it's the main star of the show. You see, as we were doing our inventory before moving into the new office, we came across this beautiful navy gray Dr. Zaber Sentry 2.0 ITX case. It's super compact, comes in just under seven liters, and it's I just love the way how it looks. It's built really well, it's compact, it's super stealth, and it just fits in within any environment. Taking a look at the case itself, the first thing that stood out to me was the build quality. This thing is built out of steel and then powder coated in gray. You'll instantly notice the quality of craftsmanship when you lay your hand on it. The side panels are perforated for both the CPU and the GPU. One thing that you guys won't see in this case is a dust filter. So we're getting pure unrestricted airflow, but yeah, that also means more dust as well. It also has some really intelligent inwards and outwards airflow because of that. Basically, the GPU and the CPU are in their own zones and both get direct access to fresh air through the perforations. Also, since the GPU is mounted at the top, a lot of the hot air will be exhausted out the top ones too. Like with all cases, you'll need to live with some limitations. Here, there's no triple slot GPU support, and if you choose a full length GPU, you'll need to use an air cooler for the CPU. And that air cooler is limited in height uh, to just 47 millimeters. You can orient the case both horizontally or vertically. I chose to go with the vertical orientation because it looks better with the uh, vertical stand attached. Now, just keep in mind that just like other boutique ITX case vendors, uh, Dr. Zaber only does a limited production run uh, every now and then based on how much interest they get. Recently, they did post a tweet mentioning that this might be the last batch for the year. Now, moving on to the CPU, we chose the Ryzen 9 3950X. This is the fastest CPU that AMD has come out with for the AM4 platform, featuring 16 cores and 32 threads. Now, I know what most of you guys are thinking. Eber. This processor has a TDP of 105 watts, so you'll need to find adequate cooling solution to cool this processor. Well, uh, remember the air cooler restrictions that I talked about earlier with the Sentry 2.0 case? We had to be a little bit creative with that, and so we decided to go with Noctua's L9A Chromax. First of all, this looks incredible with the matte black heatsink and the fan, but most importantly, its height is exactly 37 millimeters with the fan installed, so we're right in line within the limits. Secondly, we're gonna be running that 3950X in eco mode. Now, that essentially limits its TDP to 65 watts, which in theory will reduce its top end performance, but you're still getting 32 threads, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Housing the CPU and the cooler is the Strix B550i Gaming. This board is just jam-packed with absolutely everything ASUS could possibly fit into a small form factor. It has an 8 plus 2 phase PWM design that's actively cooled by a fan, and it's also the only motherboard in its entire lineup that supports memory speeds up to 5100 megahertz. The primary M.2 slot is right over here with a heatsink. For connectivity, you name it, and this board has it. There's Wi-Fi 6, an Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN port, plenty of USB 3.2 Gen 2 connectors, and a built-in I.O. shield. Uh, the board's back is pretty straightforward, but there is an additional M.2 slot. And for those of you wondering, we will be populating both M.2 slots with NVMe SSDs. The primary slot is gonna feature Corsair's MP600 2TB drive. This is a Gen 4 drive, and given their insane bandwidth capabilities, 
it does tend to run hot. So the built-in heatsink on the motherboard should help dissipate that. The rear slot will feature Crucial's P5 2TB Gen 3 drive. For memory, Crucial hooked us up with these amazing Ballistics 32GB kit with a memory speed of 4000 MHz, which were running at 3733 MHz CL17. I love the matte black industrial design on the heat spreader and it's low profile, so we shouldn't run into any compatibility issues with the case. All right, so moving on to the GPU, and this one was a really tough call to make. You see, initially we wanted to go with the RTX 3080 Founders Edition graphics card. Um, it was dual slot GPU, the dimensions were right in line uh, within the case specs, and let's be honest, it's the best looking graphics card that I've ever seen. The problem is the fan orientation. Nvidia designed the 3080 FE in such a way that it directly exhausts hot air at the back, but then on the other side, it's exhausting hot air into a blank panel which might get deflected into the general area like the motherboard and the PSU area, and that could increase interior case temperatures. So we had to look elsewhere. And guess what? EVGA sent us their RTX 3090 XC3 dual slot card. The cooling design on this GPU is pretty standard with the downdraft layout uh, on top of a massive heatsink. I'm not really a fan of how it looks, especially with this thing over here that just sticks out like a sore thumb. Actually, it does remind me of something. I'm just gonna leave this here right now. Powering the entire build is Silverstone's SX 700 watt 80 plus platinum rated power supply. It's compact, has plenty of power for the 3090 and the 3950X. So now that you're aware of what's going inside this beautiful navy gray Sentry 2.0 case, let's put this thing together and hope we don't run into any issues. All right, so the build is complete. As you can see, uh, we're in a different setting, and of course we have another member joining us. Uh, Mike, say hello. Mike is back. Mike is back. So, uh, it's been about a couple of days since I've completed this build, and honestly, uh, man, I... I got, to deal, I got to deal with a lot of the, the optimizations and issues because it was actually at my place. Mm -hmm. So, um, I've been working on this for a, a couple of days too, and you might notice that I look a little bit more tired because uh, I wasn't originally convinced that this was going to work as well as it did, but I was hell-bent on getting it optimized to the best of my abilities. But that doesn't mean that there weren't some issues. So oh, I think yeah. Eber wants to start with one yeah. of those. The first thing that I want to talk about is the non-sleeve cables uh, for the, with the power supply. I had to actually uninstall a lot of the components to route the cables, like the memory for instance. Uh, and yeah, it was just so frustrating. Honestly, I just gave up to a point where like, Mike, can you just come and do this for me? Now? So. <laughs> he doesn't like cable routing. So yeah. the problem with those, those flat cables is that in order to get them through the case, they're vertically flat. And the last thing you want in such a slim chassis like this is something that's vertically high. Mm -hmm. And then trying to sort of manipulate them and move them around, it's a lot harder than just regular sleeve cables. But another issue that we ran into the second we started the system is that the GPU wasn't detected. And that brought us back to the RX 5700 days when you plugged a PCIe Gen 4 card into a PCIe Gen 3.0 riser cable. And in this case, it's a sort of a riser PCB. Mm. Uh, and it just wasn't detected by the motherboard. We had that printing matrix thingy on Exactly, we actually posted that on Twitter and yeah. we were both laughing our asses off. <laughs> you first need to install an older GPU switch the motherboard over to Gen 3 signaling, mm -hmm. reinstall the RTX 3000 yeah. series card, and then it'll boot without a problem. So the other thing I wanted to talk about quickly is eco mode and how we address that. There's an issue with the ASUS ROG motherboards where it's actually the motherboard itself that takes over eco mode. 
in most situations, what should happen is that Ryzen Master, you should be able to enable eco mode there, mm -hmm. turn on precision boost overdrive in the BIOS, and then basically Ryzen Master will take over that eco mode and there's no problem. It seems like Asus's BIOS is taking precedence over Ryzen Master. Mm -hmm. Luckily, that ROG motherboard, you can just enable that 65 watt power mode and you're off to the race. You don't even have to worry about Ryzen Master. So I think we sort of want to transition at this point to temperatures and also clock speeds over time. So under full core load, the 3950X stayed under 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, and when gaming, both the CPU and the GPU were around 85 degrees Celsius max. Now performance in gaming versus the 3950X in an open test bench running at its default 105 watt TDP uh, was literally the same since the GPU is being bottlenecked most of the time and the likely threat of workloads have very similar results uh, to the stock 3950X. All right, so I wanted to go into a little bit more about what's happening here with the temperatures. So what's happening with the case right now is that the GPU is on the top and all of the, it has direct access to cool air from the outside through a grill on this side. But a lot of that heat is also being exhausted out the top here because what Dr. Zabra did is they gave this whole case a compartmentalized approach. What will end up happening in this case though is that there is going to be some excess heat that does get built up here because the GPU exhausts its air all the way around. Mm -hmm. So what I really want to try is a modification maybe in, a, in another video where we try and force some air out of this area in order to speed up that cooling of the GPU. Now underneath, there is still some heat soak from that GPU going into the general area of, of the CPU. But what also happens here is that with the CPU getting fresh air from outside, any of the heat is exhausted directly down into the, uh, the motherboard area. But because of the additional perforations on the side, a lot of that is also exhausted through there. Right now, I think that we can do a couple more little voltage modifications in mm -hmm. order to get the most out of that processor. Right now, it's on a full core load. It's performing really, really well. Mm -hmm. uh, in gaming, it's performing phenomenally. Yeah. But I would like to see the temperatures just a little bit lower. But I think what that also means is that even though this build started it off as a, you know what, we're just going to put some crazy shit together, we're gonna see if it actually works. Uh, it's gone from that to, I really want this as my main PC and I just wanna tinker around with this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this build. Uh, I'm super jealous of Mike in the first place because this case looks amazing. But I also wanna hear from you guys. Do you guys have any suggestions about potential you know, upgrades or potential mods that we might be able to do inside a seven liter case? Let us know in the comments. Uh, thank you so much for watching and we'll talk to you guys in the next one. See you guys. It's so, made in Poland. Oh, it is? Yes. Okay, well, yeah, that's great. Have you been to Poland? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. no. I want to go there one time. Why? Um, Out of anywhere you can go in this world, why Poland? No offense to any Polish people, but I want to know this. It's a burning question of mine. Uh, I've heard really good things about like the Polish like culture and like a lot of these, like I know my high school English teacher was a Polish, was Polish. And when she used to teach like English, well, lessons and, lessons and things like that, she brings in some of her like cultural uh, uh, examples. And it's, it's, I mean, to me, it was fascinating. So, Plus you get pierogies, you get latkes. Okay. All the good food, man. <laughs>